Based is my favourite TV show ever, and probably one of the best I've ever seen. Like, I know I'm young and this is subject to change, but I've never seen a show quite like Space before, and I don't think I ever will. I'm really late to the Edgar Wright hype train, so I only watched this earlier this year. Spaced is such a cleverly written and unique show, unlike any sitcom at the time or even now. Directed by Edgar Wright pre Shaun of the Dead and released just before the turn of the century, somehow its limited 14 episode run feels mostly timeless, obviously if you ignore the references to the time period. Wright's distinct style of fast camera movement and tight comedy writing is on full display here, making for a show with a perfectly crafted tone, themes, humour and references. For this video I'll just be talking about season 1, giving a summary of the show and then going through each episode. You don't need to have any prior knowledge of the show to watch this and I'm going to try not to spoil too much for you, but once you're done with this video I highly recommend you go watch the show for yourself. All 14 episodes are available for free on YouTube so you've got nothing to lose. Hello, this is Editing Charlie here. I am now on my couch. I just wanted to give a huge shout out to the channel Absolute Jokes. Uh, they're the channel that posted all 14 episodes of Space on YouTube for free and I used a lot of their clips for this video and you'll see their logo uh, in the corner of like all of them. DP, Dead Parrot I think it stands for, it's like a series they do. Anyway, thank you Absolute Jokes, carried this entire video. I would thank Channel 4 because I got they uploaded the first episode of Spaced for free on YouTube, but their website isn't accessible for anyone out of the UK, so that's not very helpful for me, so... But anyway, yeah, absolute jokes. I'll link their channel in the description. Go check them out and go check out Spaced. Thank you! Back to normal me. So, Space follows Tim and Daisy, played by a young and virtually unknown Simon Pegg and Jessica Hines, two 20-somethings in London looking for a place to flat. After Tim's girlfriend breaks up with him and subsequently kicks him out of the house, he meets Daisy at a coffee shop where they soon grow close. Eventually, the two of them decide to rent a flat together, one they can only apply for if they pose as a professional couple. Their flat is also home to Marsha, played by Julia Deacon, a middle-aged landlady who is literally always drunk, and Brian, played by Mark Heap, an eccentric artist who expresses himself through pain, fear, anger, and aggression. Also included in the main cast of characters is Mike, played by Nick Frost, a deluded army man who is Tim's childhood best friend, and Twist, a straight up judgmental bitch who works in fashion who Daisy likes for some reason. The writing in Space is exceptional, done by both Simon Pegg and Jessica Hines. The constant and well implemented pop culture references, along with the creative ways in which the characters imagine their lives, makes for a super unique presentation. The character writing especially stands out to me as being close to perfect. Each of the six main casts are really distinct in their personalities and style of humour. The main standouts to me are Tim and Daisy themselves. Tim is really this childish man baby who has no faith in woman after being dumped by his girlfriend and yet he's extremely likeable. He's an aspiring graphic designer, a passionate skateboarder, a video game enthusiast, a sci-fi geek and an all-round funny guy who has excellent chemistry with Daisy. Daisy is probably my favourite character in the whole show, which is a hard decision to make but I just really connect with her personally. She's a writer without much motivation who's super ditzy, talkative, passionate and loving. One of the best gags involving Daisy is when she applies for a spunky woman's magazine called Flaps. She basically fucks up the entire interview and ends it by saying girl power. I froze up. I just made a tit of myself. How much of a tit? I said girl power. Did you do this? Mike is another one of my personal favourite characters. I read Nick Frost's autobiography, Truths, Half-Truths and Little White Lies, somewhat recently, and found out that he had literally no acting experience before Spaced. He was living with Simon Pegg at the time, his best friend, and Mike Watt originated as an impression he used to do to make Simon laugh. Simon loved the character so much that he incorporated it into the show and blessed the world with Nick Frost's presence. As great as he is in Spaced, you can tell how nervous he is to be acting, especially in season 1, something he talks about more in his book. I highly recommend you give it a read if you're interested, or if you're a fan of him in any way. Even the supporting characters are fantastic. Dwayne Benzie's entire existence just makes me laugh. He's Tim's former friend who stole his girlfriend, is extremely arrogant, and speaks with this fake deep voice that makes for some incredible line delivery. You shot me in the bollocks, Tim. Tyres is one of the most iconic characters in the show, a cyclist with a short attention span who can turn anything into rave music. 
Every single character in space is a testament to the strength of the writing. Simon and Jessica clearly have a thorough understanding of comedy and how to mix it with genuine heartfelt moments. I think having both a man and a woman writing the show gives space a unique spin on typical sitcoms that were popular at the time. There are points in the show where I can clearly tell which one of them influenced the scene the most. For example, there are multiple instances where Twist and Marsha both passively aggressively comment on Daisy's weight in such a realistic way that I can tell Jessica wrote it. Daisy! Oh! Now do you look nice! <laughs> Bit of a midriff show? Big's in this season. Good for you. I'm especially thankful for Jess's writing and work on the show in general. She's one of the strongest forces behind the show, and it's just a shame her male counterparts get more attention. In my opinion, the reason female characters are usually so poorly written in Edgar Wright movies is because of a lack of Jessica Hines. I'm looking at you, baby driver. There are a few monologues in space that Tim has where I can clearly see Simon's influence, as this overly formal and dramatic style of writing is something that pops up in later Edgar Wright films, especially Shaun of the Dead. I hate it! It's boiling the bag perversion for sexually repressed accountants and first year drama students with too many posters of Betty Blue, the Blues Brothers, Big Blue and Blue Velvet on their blue bloody walls! Having this joint perspective makes for a show that can truly appeal to anyone. Speaking of similarities to future Edgar Wright projects, there are multiple elements of space that set the blueprint for these films. The, he's not my boyfriend joke appears first in space. Hello? Oh, hi Mike. Yeah, it's here. I'll just get him, it's your boyfriend. He's not my boyfriend. Hi, babe. Well, I wasn't the one who was blowing our cover by having a tiff with my boyfriend. He's not my boyfriend. <laughs> Might be a bit warm, the cooler's off. Thanks, babe. Along with episode three of season one directly inspiring the entire premise of Shaun of the Dead. Speaking of which, I should probably get into the episode summary. Episode one, Beginnings, gets off to an interesting start where we see Tim and Daisy breaking up with their respective partners, shot in such a way that makes the audience believe they're breaking up with each other. Because Tim's girlfriend has kicked him out, he spends all of his time at a coffee shop in between shifts at his work. Fantasy Bazaar. This is where he meets Daisy, who is living in a squat and they bond over their frustration over flat hunting. Obviously, as I said earlier, they do eventually find a flat and have to fake being a professional couple in order to get it. There's a great scene where they run through a crazy amount of personal history just in case there are specific details about each other. I forgot we had a fifth birthday. Uh, miniature drum kit. Miniature drum kit, oh, okay. Tim got a miniature drum kit for his fifth birthday. Also during this bit, we get our first joke hinting at something extraterrestrial or otherworldly, and these jokes pop up a bit, especially in this season. When I first watched this, I actually thought there was going to be a subplot with real aliens, but no. This is just an example of the main characters imagining and exaggerating their reality, which actually works better for me even though I was confused at first. Anyway, they get a tour of the flat, there's a shining reference, their plan works, and the landlady Marsha gives them the flat. I know I keep interrupting to tell you about the jokes, but one of my favourite gags happens here where they first speak to Marsha. So, uh... How long have you been together? Uh, five, five years, eight, eight months, months, three days. days. <laughs> <laughs> also, the chemistry between Simon and Jessica, and by extension Tim and Daisy, is so good here, even in their first interaction. They unpack, mostly. There's a Scooby-Doo reference, and Tim accidentally finds Brian with his dick out, discovering he rents downstairs. Do you mean am I gay? What? Do you mean am I gay? No, no, I meant, uh, are you renting the downstairs flat? Oh, right. Yep, sort of. They have dinner together, Marsha invites herself in, and they repeat my favourite joke again. How long have you been together? Uh, five, five years, years eight, eight months, months, three days. days. That's what you said two days ago. Shit! Uh, Daisy takes it from the first time we kissed, I take it from the first time we were, uh, physically intimate with each other. Whose is it today, then? Uh, it's Daisy's. Mine. <laughs> So you had sex before you kissed. Shit. This episode is a clear and concise introduction to most main characters. Sorry, Mike. And the central premise of the show. It's definitely not one of the strongest of the season, but it does a great job for what it is. Episode 2, Gatherings, is a bit more slow, but enjoyable nonetheless. We see how unmotivated Daisy is to actually do work, and she sits at a typewriter store. I can relate. After they unpack some more and relieve some tension, Daisy comes up with the idea to throw a housewarming party in another attempt to avoid doing any writing. Unfortunately for her, it's nowhere near as cool as she hypes it up to be. This is where we properly meet Tim's friend Mike for the first time, as well as Daisy's friend Twist. She's my least favourite character, but I still find her really funny. Mike is fantastic in this episode too, I love him. He provides some very important door security for the party. Of course Marsha and Brian attend as well, along with the paper boy that Daisy invited. 
Daisy makes all the decorations out of tin foil. They listen to the time warp, which really pisses Tim off. And Daisy and Tim confess to Brian that they aren't really a couple after he finds out they sleep in separate rooms. Throughout the season, pretty much every character finds out the two of them aren't together, except Marsha because they're scared that she'll kick them out of the flat. This isn't too important in season one, but comes up more frequently in season two. So basically the party is a bust. Marsha's teenage daughter is having a much louder party upstairs and the episode ends with the gang crashing the party. Amber is a stereotypical overdramatic teen girl who's always fighting with her mum and the audience never gets to see her face. Fun fact, she's actually voiced by Jessica Hines. Episode 3, Art, is the one that inspired Shaun of the Dead. This is where you see the show really come into itself and the comedy takes top priority here. The episode opens with Tim hallucinating after buying some cheap speed and playing Resident Evil 2 all night. He imagines himself violently shooting zombies and delivering cheesy one-liners before Daisy snaps him back into reality. This one minute long opening was the entire basis for Edgar Wright and Simon Pegg's idea to make a zombie movie and we all know how that turned out. Episode 3 is also where Daisy does that magazine interview as I mentioned before. Girl power. The reason she fucks up the interview is thanks to her having a big toke on it. <laughs> the reason she fucks up the interview is thanks to her having a big toke on a South African drugs river style spliff dip provided by Tim. Also during this episode, Brian gets a letter from his former artistic collaborator, Volva. Yes. Telling him to come to one of her shows. Tim calls her a slur, which is obviously aged poorly, but I feel like this is exactly how childishly Tim would react to another artist like Brian. It's already been established that he thinks Brian is pretentious. Plus, the actual way the show goes about Volva isn't really offensive. The non-gender specific thing makes complete sense when you see her style of artistry. Just wanted to get that explanation out of the way. That's one aspect of the show that has aged. And if you don't want to see that kind of stuff, then I completely understand. I guess I just wanted to give you a warning about it. Also, she's played by David Walliams, who for some reason I didn't recognize at first. Brian is absolutely obsessed with Volva and feels inferior as an artist compared to her. He decides to go to the show despite feeling like a loser and Tim and Daisy force themselves in, mostly for the free booze. After a riveting performance, Brian confronts Volva and Tim ends up punching her in the face, still hallucinating. <laughs> oh, Brian, you came. Um, no, I just spilled my drink. Daisy's frustrations about her job rejection inspire her to make some performance art of her own. This one is definitely up there with my favorite episodes. Episode four, Battles. Do you guys like my cup? The comedy gets even better here. I probably like this episode so much because it heavily features Mike and Dwayne Benzie. Every time I bring him up, I will use his full name. So I haven't even mentioned that Daisy has an actual boyfriend that isn't him. His name is Richard and he lives in hell. I only bring this up because he breaks up with her in this episode. Daisy confides in Marsha because she's obviously upset, but she forgets that Marsha is under the impression that Tim is her boyfriend, so she shot herself in the foot. To cover this up, she randomly asks Marsha if the two of them can have a dog because she says it'll bring them closer together. Marsha surprisingly agrees, but Tim hates the idea, as he has a childhood phobia of dogs. Eventually though he gives in, and Daisy adopts Colin, named after the box she owned as a kid. The superior subplot of this episode is introduced next. Tim and Mike go paintballing. Of course Mike takes it deathly seriously, and this leads to some great jokes and physical comedy. Oh, this is so exciting. Is your first time, kid? I'm 36. Is your first time, old man? But uh-oh, guess who else is there? Dwayne Benzie, best character. We get this iconic line. You know what they say about love and war? Yeah, one involves a lot of physical and psychological pain, and the other one's war. Dwayne Benzie is on Tim and Mike's team, but he ends up trying to betray Tim anyway, because of course he does. However, Tim pulls a sneaky one and shoots him in the balls. I keep saying this, but this truly is one of the funniest episodes of the show. There's a dramatic scene where Mike pretends to die after being shot by Dwayne Benzie, and Tim holds him in his arms as he cries. Side note, and spoilers, this happens in both Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz. Edgar Wright enjoys killing Nick Frost and making Simon Pegg cry. I'm just gonna let this bit play. <laughs> You know, I really enjoyed that today. Me too. You always enjoy it. Well, you know, I enjoyed it a little bit more than usual today. <laughs> Episode 5, Chaos, lives up to its name. This is what I like to call an adventure episode, which is a favourite kind of episode for fans of Spaced. It starts out with Tim complaining about Colin and how much Daisy is attached to him. They have this excellent exchange. Look, Tim, I know that I've been insensitive, okay? And I do appreciate that you are riddled with deep-seated psychological disorders. Thank you. There's this scene where Tim, Daisy and Brian contemplate chaos theory after watching three Star Wars movies. Oh my god. What? I've got some fucking Jaffa cakes in my coat pocket. Oh, 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 
and then Tim is tasked with taking Colin on a walk where, of course, he loses him. Daisy freaks out thinking he lost Colin on purpose and punches Tim in the face. Turns out Colin was actually kidnapped by a vivisectionist and the main gang have to go on a mission to rescue him. We've got a nice Star Wars theme going on in this episode and in most episodes really. Sound off. Luke. Oh. Chewie. Um, I mean, Leia. Yes, Tim. Oh. Jabba. It's Jabba the princess. Yes. Yeah. Here. During this rescue operation, we get the first hint that there's actually something romantic going on between Tim and Daisy when Twist implies that Daisy has a crush on him. However, they're both interrupted before they can keep talking about it. This is one of those things that you should definitely watch the show for, and I won't be going into too much detail about the romance, or lack thereof, here. Colin is rescued, Tim learns to tolerate him, and they all live happily ever after. <coughs> Episode 6, Epiphanies, is the best episode in this season and I don't think this is an unpopular opinion. It has one of my favourite opening scenes, which is a flashback to a young Brian in a club listening to Come On Eileen, attempting to join a dance but accidentally knocking some guy's drink out of his hand. The guy punches him in the face and I'm noticing a huge trend while writing this. A lot of characters get punched in this season of Spaced. But anyway, this scene will be important later. We get Tyre's first appearance next, absolutely iconic. He's a cyclist who bikes around Tim's drawings for him. And he also doesn't believe that Tim and Daisy are just friends. I can't get my head around this uh, platonic intergender relationship malarkey. It just doesn't seem right to me. Don't get me wrong, like, I don't mind having a chin wag with a honey, but I just like to do it after waggling on her chin, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You like to waggle your willy on her chin? Don't come your post-feminist art school bollocks with me, Sunflower. That's your real friggin' name. All right, I work for a living. What do you do? I write, actually. Oh, do you? In other words, you're on the dole. When I used to uh, friends coming out with me tonight or what? He invites the two of them out for a night of clubbing where they convince Mike and Twist to come while Brian refuses because of the Come On Eileen incident. Obviously Daisy is the most excited for this. We get this scene. Why would I want to borrow your clothes? <laughs> Lovingly referenced on Simon Pegg's Instagram. And Daisy lends Mike this pink shirt which genuinely suits him. Brian is only convinced to go out with them when Marsha remarks that it'll be just the two of them in the flat. They have this weird sex thing going on where Marsha is really flirty and Brian hates it, but they don't address it in this season so don't worry. Really the rest of this episode doesn't matter because the rave part of this episode is the best thing about it. I mean, it's very hard to find clips of it that use more than two pixels, but I'll take what I can get. The song playing is great, everyone looks awesome, the camera work and editing perfectly capture the vibe of going out clubbing, not that I would know what that's like, and Tim and Daisy have a really cute scene on a couch together. Also I love the gag of everyone's names being changed in the credits. Rewind. The episode ends with Mike singing, and I think this solidified it as the best episode of season one for me. We're already on to the final episode of the season. Episode 7 ends. Tim gets a call from Sarah, his ex-girlfriend who dumped him for Dwayne Benzi and kicked him out of the house at the beginning of the show. Much to Tim's excitement and Daisy's dismay, Sarah asks for the two of them to have a talk. Daisy is only looking out for Tim here because she knows the hurt that Sarah has caused him and how he's totally not over what happened. Regardless, Tim meets up with her, she tells him she's split up with Dwayne Benzi and Tim reacts about how you'd expect. <laughs> Daisy is obviously unimpressed. While this is going on, Mike is taken for a re-evaluation for the Territorial Army, where he explains the Euro Disney incident, and once again, I will not spoil this for you. Tim and Daisy have a genuinely heated and realistic argument before he meets with Sarah again. Brian and Twist go on a date where they look at white paintings, and Daisy actually does some work. Proud of her. Eventually, Daisy gets a call from Tim, where he asks her to come meet him at the pub. Turns out he ended up rejecting Sarah after she said she wanted him back because he had a moment of clarity. This is one of those monologues that I said earlier clearly has Simon's writing influence all over it. But like still, it's, it's great. Life just isn't like the movies, is it? You know? We're constantly led to believe in, in resolution, in, in the re-establishment of the ideal status quo, and it's, it's just not true. Happy endings are a myth designed to make us feel better about the fact that life is just a thankless struggle. 
A song starts playing and Tim invites Daisy for a dance. We get to see what each character is up to by the end of the season. Marsha is passed out drunk, Brian is aggressively painting, Twist is hardcore crushing on Brian, and Mike is finally back in the army. The episode ends with Tim and Daisy dancing together as the credits play, where Daisy asks Tim if he can lend her some of his porn. A perfect ending to a fantastic season, if you ask me. Season 1 of Spaced is just almost flawless. I can't stress enough how much I love it. The characters, writing, editing, humour, style, pacing, cinematography, everything just comes together effortlessly to make for one of the most perfect seasons of television I have ever seen. And this is only scratching the surface. Season 2 only continues to prove on these elements. But that's a topic for another video. There's so much I haven't even covered here, in part to make sure this video isn't 3 hours long, but also to hopefully inspire you to go watch Spaced for yourself. Seriously, go watch it. 14 episodes is barely anything for a show. Even if you hate it, you won't have wasted much of your time. Literally the main reason I made this video is because no one has seen Spaced. It has a solid fan base, yeah, but in comparison to Edgar Wright's other work, I see nobody talking about it. So I hope this video inspires you to give it a chance because it really is as good as I'm hyping it up to be. Thank you guys so much for watching this if you've got this far. This is my first proper YouTube review and I loved making it. Like, comment, subscribe, whatever. I'm planning on making heaps more videos in the future. I love reviewing stuff, so yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Also, go follow me on Letterboxd. Thank you. Hi, Dom. Yeah. This is Dwayne Benzie. This is Dwayne, Dwayne Benzie. Benzie. How you doing?